Our first speaker of the morning is Connor Fitzgerald from Quantum Security, who will be talking about an exploration of the ethical issues with gamification of information security awareness training. Not the longest title in the conference. Please welcome Connor. Uh, thank you, John. Can you all hear me okay at the back? That's great. Uh, I did try and go for the longest title in the hope that if I filled out the title with lots of words, it might eat into my speaking time. So we'll see how that goes. Before I start, just want to say a thank you to the sponsors, the conference host, for making this happen. By stumping up some hard-earned cash, it means that this can happen in person in this beautiful venue. A couple of other really quick thank yous. Thank you to John and his team on the organizing committee for making this happen. Logistically, I just turn up and start talking, which is a dream for me. But also to the amazing team of Blue Shirt volunteers who... Oh, that's okay. I'm hearing myself an echo, that's okay. Uh, and to the amazing team of Blue Shirt volunteers who have uh, done all the ground handling today and yesterday and in the lead up to this. So a, a thank you to those. Before I move on, one last thank you. As a recent immigrant to New Zealand, because I came here in July 2019, as Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern says, a thank you to the team of five million. I'm very grateful to be in New Zealand at this time during a global pandemic. So thank you to all the work you do around that. Now, move on slightly. I work for Auckland and Wellington-based information security consultancy and penetration testing company Quantum. I joined in July 2019, and as you can guess from my accent, I'm not from these parts at all. Uh, I'm from Ireland, so hello to my friends in the Dublin OWASP chapter who are watching the live stream this morning. Good night to you, which I think is right. I don't know what day it is your time, but uh, that's okay. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the ethical issues that are associated with gamification and I'm going to try and apply it to an AppSec or an information security awareness training context. Where did I get the inspiration for this talk? It came from one of my colleagues back in October who sent me a Teams message with this question. And uh, so I'm going to blame Dan for the inspiration of this talk. As a result of this question, I went and did some reading and research to try and give him a good answer. And then I've expanded on that for, for this, this presentation. I'm hoping that regardless of whether you're involved in the implementation of information security awareness training, maybe AppSec secure code training, or maybe indeed you just consume the mandatory awareness training that your organizations do or should do or don't do, that you'll be able to take something useful from this. What's interesting about the track talks this morning during this session is they seem to focus a little bit on the human or the people-centric aspects of AppSec and information security. So taking this session as this track as a whole, I'm hoping that it's a little bit softer around some of the less techie skills and gives you maybe some food for thought. So I don't expect you to take anything concrete from this that might improve application security, but it might help you frame some questions about the issues that are associated with gamification. What are the next 30 minutes going to take? Uh, I'm going to look at what gamification is, because I've used that word now many times already and I haven't told you what I think it is. I'm going to look at what ethical issues might apply around the use of gamification, and then I'm going to try and look at how that might be applied to information security awareness training and in the context that I talk about whether that's secure code development, whether it's the mandatory um, awareness training that, that people do. Okay, not so bad some definitions. Just to set the scene, I'm just going to use these as my working definition titles. I don't necessarily agree with them all, but I'm just going to use them for the sake of clarity. I think there could be a talk about whether they actually mean those things, but for InfoSec, I'm going to use the NIST definition, which talks about the CIA of the information awareness training. A bit of a misnomer when you put both words together, if you think about it, awareness and training are not necessarily the same thing, but I'm going to say that awareness training is a formal process for educating employees about information security, at least in this context. Gamification in the bottom right of the screen is the use of games or play in a non-game situation such as business. So gamification is the use of games or game play in a non-game situation such as the very serious world of business or organization or the companies that we work for. Ethics, these are the moral principles which govern a person's behavior or the conducting of an activity. 
ethics then are not what we think or feel is the right or wrong thing to do. It is not a personal choice. It's an uplift above that around a set of principles that govern what we do. So they are the, the words that I had on the title, the um, look at the ethical issues associated with gamification and information security awareness training. So I'm just putting them together. Okay. Gamification then can create a more game-like work environment. And as people that like games, this is not a bad thing to do. It can help stimulate performance, and that's definitely a good thing to do. It can achieve a policy statement. So if our policy statement is something like we want all of our developers to be trained around how on the OWASP top 10, for example, then that's a good, good thing to do. Gamification can also help motivate people to achieve those policy statements or to stimulate performance. And how is that achieved? On the right-hand side, then, it's through the use of badges, leaderboards, challenges, puzzles, things we've all seen in the gameplay uh, that, that come with that. When we collide the two worlds of gameplay and the perceived serious business of our work, it creates what's called in the academic research some tension points. And it's these that I'd like to explore with you this morning during the talk. It's these tension points. And to give you some questions to ask as you explore those together. In my mind, gamification is on the clock of the employer. It's something that happens during paid working time. It's something that you do during work and it's part of the job. In my mind, if it's outside that, it goes into the realm of games or gaming or play. And I don't think that's what gamification is. Gamification, in my mind, is something associated with making uh, work life a bit more playful, a bit more game-like. In some of the research, they've collided the two words of play and labor, and John be familiar with the spelling of this, but to come up with this phrase of labor, that it's somehow playful to do some of the work that we do. I think, and I propose, that there is a power imbalance when we use gamification in a work situation for information security awareness training. I think the power imbalance favors the employer as opposed to the employee or the user who's using the gamification system or apparatus or settings. The reason I say that is it's in the employer's interest to have the developers trained around secure coding. It's in the employer's interest to have all of the employees trained at induction stage on information security awareness. It's in the employer's interest to have that done on a regular basis. What does the employee get from a gamified system? Yep, it might be a little bit more fun, and that's a pretty cool thing to do because these things are traditionally quite boring, a little bit monotonous, not really sure why, why we're doing them. So I want you to keep this in mind that in my view, and maybe you agree, maybe you disagree, but that there's a power imbalance that begins with the use of gamification. I'd also say this though, that gamification is not always ethically wrong. I don't believe it's the wrong thing to do. So I want you to, to bear this in mind that an employer using a leaderboard to display performance around information security awareness is slightly different to a company using a gameful tool to aid maybe weight loss. So depending on the context, there can be different, different ethical considerations for what's, what's in play. There are four areas I'm going to explore, and the first one I'm going to look at is around exploitation. And when we think of exploitation, we might think about human rights abuses or something quite egregious or something difficult that we, we're, we're not happy with. And how can you relate that, Connor, to information security? So what I'd say is, for a gamification system to apply around information security, is there an option for the employee to opt out of that? If we say that the training is mandatory, that implies that everybody has to do it. So if it's a gamified system, what does the employee have as an option to get, get out of doing that? If they have no option, is that not actually exploiting the choice or the freedom of the employees around that? If that's the case, that it's mandatory and the employee has no choice except to do this, is their only option to quit their job? 
That's not really a great outcome from what we're looking for from a gamified system. In advance of you signing up to use this, signing up to log into the portal, looking at the leaderboards, has the employee or the user been informed of the purpose for which this gamif gamified system is there? Have they been informed of what the data is actually going to be used for? And when we consider the aspect of exploitation, is there actually an employer-employee power imbalance? And if so, who is the one that favours most from that? Information security awareness training has been traditionally associated with the words on the left-hand slide of this slide. It's boring, it's meaningless, it's monotonous. Gamification, though, can help make this a little bit more fun, a little bit more exciting, and it can reduce the boredom of some, some of the monotony that might actually exist. So then it's probably a good thing to do to have a gamified system because if these are the things that currently exist on the left-hand side, then gamification surely helps with that. And the first area around expectation, expectation, I just want you to consider that we're not exploiting the employees just to give them back something that's more fun or more exciting or reduces some of the boredom from some of the work. Next up, manipulation. If an organization or a company doesn't disclose the contents or the goals of its gamification system because it knows that they would otherwise not participate, then that's manipulation of those workers. I can't see any other situation where if you don't tell people what you're doing, you can't be anything else except manipulating some of the employees. My suggestion here is about providing as much disclosure of the information about what the gamif gamified system is going to achieve and what its data is going to be used for in advance so that employees can have what I would call informed consent before signing up to do that. Otherwise, in my mind, it comes straight into the area of manipulation. Can gamification cause harm? You might say, oh, what is he talking about? It's too early on a Saturday morning to be thinking about questions like this, but let's think about the scenario where um, seeing your performance versus your co-workers on a screen, how does that make you feel if you're in the top tier of those performers? Probably not so bad in a competitive world, that's a really, really good thing. How does it make you feel if you're in the bottom tier of whatever that is? Maybe not so good. The Disneyland electronic or digital whip story, which you can Google afterwards, has a quote about it on the right-hand side. And this is in a hospitality context where the performance of employees was put up on a big screen in a hospitality situation. And the quote was that employees had been known to skip bathroom breaks out of fear that their production will fall and that the managers will demand an explanation. Let's put that into a gamification context then. We've got a leaderboard. I think it's probably unlikely that we'll be skipping bathroom breaks, but could managers reasonably demand an explanation as to why you haven't completed what you have? Why are you bottom of the leaderboard? Is that not actually causing some sort of mental anguish and some sort of potential harm? And if it is, is that a good thing to do around gamification? I'd argue not. When we look at the traditional leaderboard that's associated with gamification. It has the top 10, the list of all the people that are involved, it ranks them from one all the way down to the bottom. Is it really necessary to share that information with all of the people who are participating? What is the purpose for doing that? Is it really, really necessary for everybody to know everybody's performance in that? Advanced disclosure in advance may not alleviate potential uh, harm. I think of the EULAs and the agreements that we all randomly sign up to every single day, the lengthy agreements, we just click yes. Is that really informed consent about what, what we're doing? One of the other areas of consideration then is around character. Some of the real life characteristics that we display in every normal life, we might not want to represent with our avatar or our profile in this gamified system. We want to, might want to be shiny, we might want to be flash, we might want to have something else. Can we draw an inference from the data that's in that uh, virtual profile and bring it into real life? Culture, when I look at 
gamification, it can create in a, cult in a company unnatural competition and some tension points. In a traditionally non-competitive world, this is probably not a good place to be. My experience around um, New Zealand is that it's not culturally common for one to boast about your achievements. Hence, there may be a cultural clash around the presentation of a leaderboard with the reward of the top achievers, and that might be somehow culturally inappropriate. If the top three people that do so well in this information security awareness training or the secure code training are rewarded with a bonus or with some sort of financial incentive, are we actually exploiting the rewards for some sort of cultural gain? Why gamification though? It sounds great on the surface. It's pretty anecdotal in its research. There are lots of published stories around the success of gamification. There aren't so many published stories around the lack of implementation or the incorrect implementation or the unsuccessful implementations that haven't worked that well. Some of the benefits and dangers aren't well researched. I want to just take a small side swipe on this around gamers took more out of gamification systems than the general population. That's kind of obvious, right? Gamers would like it more. But what's interesting was the general population, non-gamers, enjoyed gamification more than the gamers did. Interesting take. Some quotes here. Security awareness is important, yet yeah, we all know this, we hear this, if there's no security culture, we need it. But people aren't even completing these information security awareness or these uh, secure code training because they're so boring. And back in a study a couple of years back, only 32% agreed or strongly agreed that the compliance training they received was engaging. If we look at what gamification can do then, it can make learning more fun through the use of stories in teams, tracking points, earning achievements, and with some competitive leaderboards. Here's an interesting quote from Burke. Sorry, I'll go back there. Someone wanted to take a photo. Okay, in gamification though, in a game someone wins. In gamification of information security awareness or in secure code training, we actually want everyone to win. If everyone wins, nobody wins. If everyone wins, nobody loses. So is that what we actually want? We want a leaderboard which announces a winner, but actually what we want is increased information security awareness. We want developers to go away around whatever it might happen to be, the OWASP top 10 or whatever. We want them actually to implement that. In an education context, um, in a school setting, the majority of school staff members just didn't turn up to some of the sessions. These are all problems that gamification is actually intended to solve. Some of the myths that one of the gamification service providers has debunked is that gamification is just a fad, that it's just around participation, it's too complex. Our people aren't competitive, they wouldn't go for this. Our people are way too serious and it's an expensive luxury. Gamification's probably been around in the academic research for about 15 years. It can help drive retention of information as well as just participation. So activity is not just a measure. We're looking for people to take away some information. It doesn't need to be overly complex. Um, our people aren't competitive. There's no evidence around that. Our people are too serious. I don't think there's any organization that would say it's too serious. And it can be a little bit more affordable today. Kim and Werbeck on the key ethical questions talked about the four areas I've explored there, which is, does it take advantage of an employee? Is it exploitative? Does it infringe? Does it manipulate? Does it cause harm to the workers? And does it somehow have a negative effect on the moral or the virtual effect of the character involved? It can help though around raising information security awareness. Does it offer choice? Can the employee choose to be involved in this? What was the intent of the designer? Was the intent of the designer to raise awareness? Or was the intent to raise awareness and share that information onwards with a vendor for marketing or sales purposes? What are the potential positive outcomes? Let's raise the awareness. That's a good thing to do. One of the negative outcomes might be some of the exploit of the digital or electronic whip that was on from earlier on. And are the beneficial outcomes weighed more in favor of the employer or the employee? That power imbalance I talked about a little bit earlier on. 
Gamification becomes unethical when the Dane designer uses the psychology of the players to do things that are not in their best interest. No problem, we agree with that. Leaky containers, if the information is coming out of one system, the gamification system, and being used in another, is that ethical? Are we looking at the digital whips like the Disneyland story from earlier on? Is that what we're doing? Are we using the information that's in the system for insider marketing purpose? If we are, have we informed the employees in advance? There's an illusion of change around gamification. Just because it's different, it might not actually result in any real change. And the problem with that is that people could be more dissatisfied and disillusioned as a result. What if the leaderboards actually had a negative purpose, that they actually had an environment where it created work intimidation? That's not a good thing to do because we're trying to motivate people to do good stuff. I'm coming close to the end. It's really obvious that gamification isn't a panacea. It's not the answer to all of our problems. If information security awareness training or secure code training are associated with boring and monotony and not being fun, then gamification can help around that because it can create a bit more excitement, a bit more interest and reduce some of, it, some of the monotony. I like this quote about gamification and I think it's probably one of the things that I'd like you to consider. That like a hammer, gamification is a tool, and a hammer can be used to build beautiful houses. Um, a hammer, though, can be used to break objects as well and cause great damage. This doesn't make the hammer itself ethical or unethical, it's just a tool, and that the same is true of gamification. So as a tool, gamification can help. Just think about that in that context. I'm summing up here with this last uh, slide set. The specific ethical considerations for gamification in an information security awareness training context are, has the employee provided informed consent in advance? Is the only option for an employee to quit their job if they don't want to participate in, is that actually reasonable in this day and age? Do leaderboards need to be shared with everyone across the organization? Could it be a cluster or a team that we share the data across? So team A, we see your results versus team B, as opposed to all of the individuals in those teams sharing on seeing all of the information for all of those other members. Is the information being only provided for information security awareness training? Or is it being secondarily used for marketing or sales purposes without being informed in advance? Does it actually work for your organization? Gamification, a bit like what one of the vendors said, it's perceived to be a fad, but if it's working, then that's a good thing. We've got some of the, quest the, the questions for you to consider on this slide, and my last one is, because of the time constraints I'm under this morning, I'm happy to take any questions from you at the lobby, and I'll be there for the rest of the day, or my contact details are here, connor at quantumsecurity.co.nz. I'm happy to share with you any of the academic research papers that I've referenced in this as well. Other than that, I say I wish you a very good day. Thank you very much for your attention this morning, and enjoy the rest of the talks. Now, actually, Connor, you hit it perfectly, allowing five minutes for questions. Great. Are there any questions from attendees in the room? Yes, sir. Uh, so, gamification has been, uh, I mean, this talks about gamification and life is secure. You know, actually, you're close enough. I'm going to hand you the mic. <laughs> uh, so, this talks about um, gamification as applied to security, but it's really about motivating people to do the right thing so that you know you all rise together. Uh, has there been any research into using gamification um, to kind of boost other aspects as well? Because for example, if an organization wants to rush, security is going to take a back foot. That kind of thing. Yeah, so if I understand the question, if an organization is under pressure and at speed and they wanted to get through the secure or through the coding pipeline, can we can gamification actually help with that? 
If the employees consider it to be boring and monotonous and something they have to do, then gamification, if it's seen to be fun and exciting and more interesting, can help with that. So that's a better outcome that comes with that. I guess my talk is centered on, if you're going to do gamification, there are probably some questions for you to ask. But ultimately, we want to make sure that at the outcome, like the last slide said, that it's actually working for the organization. There's no point just putting gamification in place. The, the use of, of games in a playful situation in business is not actually achieving the outcome of the organization if we only just have it in for the sake of playing games. We want to make sure it's actually achieving something. So it can definitely help with those outcomes and those questions that you, that you have. Any other questions? Okay, I will see you guys. I think we have one, oh, one more. Oh yeah, Liam. Um, do you know what sparked um, Dan's question. Did you guys go through some sort of gamification um, security awareness training yourself or was it just sparked from something he'd seen? Yeah, so it came from, a, the question was what sparked Dan's original question about this. It came from a, a company, one of our customers trying to, they were considering implementing uh, gamification for awareness training and they wanted to know if there was the right thing to do. Were there any risks involved? What are the considerations that they needed to go through? And so rather than just saying, oh, you go ahead, we went and did some research and came back to them with some, some of this. So one of our customers was thinking about doing that. And actually two or three people came up to me this morning and said they're in a similar boat, that they're considering using gamification for InfoSec awareness training. And that's probably a good thing to do, but while you're considering it, I think some of the questions that I've prompted during the talk are probably worth, worth considering. One final question, maybe? Okay, that's cool. Great. Thanks. Uh, I'll see you around at the stand. Thanks very much. Have a good day. All right. Thank you.